All right, so we've got a position time graph begun. Again, I'm going to make north be positive. It's going to be time on the horizontal. And I think I'm going to space it out every two on my graph paper. I'm going to go all the way up to 13, just to be lucky. If you believe in that sort of thing. Okay, so all the way up to the 13 second mark. Time in seconds. And each increment going up vertically is going to be 10 for me. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 to 150. Now this is where your graph and my graph may look similar, but just because of the limitations of our drawing abilities, it's going to be different. So if you want to write my numbers, but it might not totally match up with your results on your graph, that's cool. But I want to show a process to you, okay? So I want to be as, uh, as curvy as I can here. I want to so show some sort of a, a curvilinear graph that jumps up at the end. Yes, please. It's just going to be a sketch, so if your sketch doesn't match mine, that's okay. But try and do it in one nice, smooth stroke. And I want to choose two points on my graph. I'm going to choose them at 6.5 seconds. And I'm going to choose one at about 13 seconds. And just to emphasize, I want to show, look, that data point matches up with what happened at 6.5 seconds, and that data point matches up with what happens at 13 seconds. Just so there's no confusion at all. So this is perhaps the most seductive dance in all of graphical analysis. It's called the tangent. The tangent. Okay? So you gotta take a ruler and you gotta just ever so subtly, you know, like on a first date, not the full embrace, just the 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 gentle kiss. Okay, so you take the ruler and you gently just kiss your curve. Don't get carried away. Only kiss it in one spot. You won't get a second date otherwise. Okay? Just kissing the curve. In case you think this is inappropriate, it's just a graph. Don't get carried away, okay? So that tangent that I just drew corresponds to this point here. And I'm going to label that point time one, because that's the first time that I'm concerned about it. What I can do with this tangent is, is really, I won't say magical, but pretty fantastic, okay? It's pretty magnificent. What I'm able to do with this tangent now is I can actually find out what its rise is, and I can figure out what its, whoa, its run is. And we can call this a rate triangle if we like, but I can figure out the rise and the run for this particular rate, rate triangle, and I'll, Highlight the vertices a little bit just so they, they pop a little for us. Okay. If I find the slope of that tangent, what have I effectively found? If I can find the slope of the tangent. Yep. I like the way you think. Good thinking. I like that. Kevin, I like you. You're a great guy. All right. So, at... 6.5 seconds, we can find V instantaneous. V inst is going to be equal to, you know what, let's label this up. This rise for the rate triangle looks like it goes up to eh, 50, 60, 70, looks like it's 80. 
rise of 80 meters. And the run for this rate triangle is going to go from 2.5 all the way out to 12.5. So what's the run? 2.5 to 12.5. And you'd be surprised at how many people tell me it's 12.5, right? Because they're just looking at where it ends. You've got to do the whole run for the rate triangle. So it's 12.5 minus the 2.5. So you rate it as 10. 10 seconds. And 80 divided by 10 is, this is a hard one. 7. Get lost. All right. 8.0 meters per second. So that means that we know at 6.5 seconds, the instantaneous velocity, that is the velocity at that instant, was 8 meters per second. Now that's lovely and everything, but let's see if we can do the same thing for time 2. So what do we want to do? What's the first thing you want to do with your ruler? Go on a date with a curve, eh? All right. So you take your ruler, and you just kiss that curve. Not twice, not thrice, just once, OK? You don't want it to cut the curve in more than, or touch the curve in more than one spot. Nice line. And I want to extend that line as long as I can and keep it on the graph. All right. Now my time, my time axis stops at 13, so I'm a little bit limited here as to how far I can go off horizontally. So I'm just going to stop it at the 13. And so I'm going to define my triangle with this rise. You know, it's like just, just, just strategically, I often like to use the time axis as my run because I can see where it bisects the, the time axis there, or intersects with the time axis there. Looks like it starts at, or intersects at about 7.5. So from 7.5 to 13, 13 minus 7.5, what do you get for that? Everybody have their coffee? 5.5? Okay. 5.5 is going to be the run of that time axis, or that, that uh, tangent, great tangent. And the run, or the, sorry, the rise is going to be from 0 up to 110, 120, 130, it looks like. And so when if I find V instantaneous at 13 seconds, so at 13 seconds, inst equals rise over one run for the rate triangle 130 meters over 80 meters or 80 seconds rather what's 130 divided by 80 somebody with a calculator help the fella out one point six two five one point six two five yeah no is that right well, that's not 80 seconds. What was I thinking? I wrote down the wrong number. 5.5 seconds. It's Monday. Give me a break. All right. 130 divided by 5.5. Um, 23.63 repeating. 23.63. And those two are repeating. Oh, okay. 6, 3, 6, 3, 6, uh, 6, 4 then. Okay. 6, 4 meters per second. Okay. At 13 seconds. Oh, yeah. It's the at symbol. The at symbol. I was, I was being short for me. I don't know why I ever bother short forming the word at. It's about as long to write the symbol as the word. Anyhow, at 13 seconds, your velocity is instantaneously about 23.64 meters per second. Now, here's the real sweetheart of this whole situation. Now that I found the instantaneous velocity at 6.5 seconds and I found the instantaneous velocity at 13 seconds, do you suppose I could find acceleration for this ugly graph? How could I do it? Use the acceleration equation. Why the heck not, eh? So we say acceleration. I'm doing a big no-no here. I'm writing on the graph. But trying to keep it all on the same page. Acceleration, we have said in the past, is V2 minus V1 over T2 minus T1. Well, we're saying that this is point 0.1. And this is point 0.2. You know, time 1 and time 2. So I can figure out what the acceleration was between time 1 and time 2. V2 was 23.64 meters per second 
minus v1, which was 8 meters per second, all over 13 minus 6.5. Somebody who's quick on the draw with the old calculator. What do you get for that? Remember, you got to do the numerator and then the denominator. Yep. What is 15 minus 5.5? No, it, if you map this down, it oh, kissed the curve at 6.5. Yep. Did anybody get it? Anybody like to uh, either agree or disagree with 2.4? Okay. You would agree? I agree. Okay. So about 2.4 meters per second per second, or equivalently, 2.4 meters per second squared. Okay. Excel average acceleration of 2.4 meters per second squared between time one and time two. That's actually not a bad strategy to have under your belt because it's really easy to collect position time data. It's actually pretty hard to directly calculate acceleration time data unless you use either a strategy like this or a real sweetheart computer program. So you could do it by hand. It's so easy to do by hand. Yes, sir? So if you want to like find the acceleration of a lot of different points, you need to do that all times because it's so different. Sure, yeah. I mean, like, if this wasn't a uniform acceleration, this was some like uh, jittery acceleration. I could find the acceleration between this point and this point, between this point and this point, between this point and this point. I would do. I would be a lot of work, yeah. and I could check to see if the acceleration is constant throughout. Yeah, I, I could do that for sure. Um, I'm not going to be asking you to do that. That's one more simplification we're throwing into this course. Is that in all situations, in, unless I'm really trying to get you, we're going to assume that acceleration is a constant. Okay, so I'm not going to try and get you. That's not in my plan book. Okay?